Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Chess and welcome back to Spooktober. Now it's day 10. Uh, I think. Uh, is it day 10? Yeah, right? Uh, you know, if my listings, uh, if my lists are right, then I guess this is the 10th uh, episode of Spooktober, I guess. Um, you know, today we will talk about outer space. A uh, few days ago, we talked about underwater, and then a few days ago as well, we talked about um, underground, which is the which was the uh, the catacombs of Paris, right? There we talk about uh, the deepest, uh, not really deepest, but more like uh, things that are underground, right? We haven't yet uh, talked about. Um, what is it like a uh, underground cavern or underground like cave system i guess which can be even more terrifying um we might talk about that in the future episodes if we still have the spots for that right um uh, maybe you know like uh, somewhat between episode uh you know spooktober day 11 to spooktober day 20 probably you know um uh, we'll talk about that right um but now, you know, since we go under and then we go under again, uh, you know, we go uh, under the surface of something. Uh, today, why don't we actually explore upwards, right? Going outer, uh, you know, in specifically going outer space, right? Um, you know, like seeing the scary things in the outer space, right? But we, you know, uh, I search for things that is uh, like some creepy story i guess about uh, space but i didn't find anything uh, from wikipedia i got directed here in outer space therefore let's just talk about outer space in general right and then we might also like um imagine uh, about things that might be you know scary out there right um so yeah also we'll try to make this video like only 20 minutes if possible because I don't want to have like a longer uh, than 20 minutes video, right? Um, you know, like ideally, like 30 minutes is still okay, I guess. But, uh, you know, longer than that, it's probably not great, right? Uh, okay, let's just start, I guess. Outer space, commonly shortened to space, is the expanse that exists beyond Earth and its atmosphere. Um... And between celestial bodies, I don't know what that means, celestial bodies. Outer space is not completely empty, it is a near-perfect vacuum, containing a low density of particles, predominantly a plasma of hydrogen and helium, as well as electromagnetic radiation, magnetic fields, neutron, neutrinos, dust, and cosmic rays. So it's more like um, particles, right? Like things that are very, very small. Um, okay. The baseline temperature is um, the outer space as set by the background radiation from the Big Bang is 2.7 kelvins. Uh, okay, minus 270 degrees and then minus 455 Fahrenheit. Um, the plasma between galaxies is thought to account for about half of the baryonic ordinary matter in the universe. Having a number density of less than one hydrogen atom per cubic meter and a temperature of millions of kelvins. I don't know what this means though. But the yeah, local concentrations of matter have condensed into stars and galaxies. Studies indicate that 90% of the mass in most galaxies is in an unknown form called dark matter, which interacts with other matter through gravitational but not electromagnetic forces. Okay. Uh, observations suggest that the majority of the mass energy in the observable universe is dark energy, uh, a type of vacuum vacuum energy that is poorly understood. Okay, so we have dark matter and then dark energy, right? Um, okay. Uh, intergalactic space takes up most of the volume of the universe, but even galaxies and star systems consist almost entirely of empty space. Okay, this one's the chart, I guess. Uh, exopase or thermopause. Okay, 350 to 800 kilometers above ground, I guess. Above sea level, presumably. Uh, thermosphere, okay. International Space Station. So this one is in the outer, right? So this is the most out, I guess. Or uh, very out, I guess. Exopase. 
And then there is ISS, Space Station, uh, Noctilus and Cloud, okay, at 80 kilometers, okay, so, uh, okay, so that's Cloud, basically, right? Uh, Karman Line, 100 kilometers, I don't know what that means. Uh, Aurora, okay, I guess this one, right? The Aurora, I guess. Um, Mesosphere, Stratosphere, Troposphere, and then over there, there's Mesopause, Stratopause, Tropopause. I guess it's more like the boundary, right? Like, uh, I don't know, like the limit, I guess. I mean, it's not really a limit. You know, like, you know, if you go up there, there is not really like a line or anything that, uh, you know, will make you, oh, I'm in stratosphere. Oh, there's a line. Then I pa pass the border. I'm in mesosphere now. It's not like that, right? It's like gradient, basically. Uh, you know, think of, think of it like a gradient, basically, right? Um, and it's not just like completely different, right? It's just like, uh, you know, like the middle thing in between those gradients, right? Uh, I guess anyway. Um, I mean, logically speaking, right? You don't go up there and just, um, you know, like there is a, a boundary, right? That you can, you know, like if you go there, you can actually feel that you are in another part, right? It's not like that, I don't think anyway. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, okay, there is these clouds as well, Nacreous cloud, uh, Cirrus clouds, uh, Contrails, weather balloon, Cumulonimbus clouds, so that's the one that caused storm, right? Uh, okay, objects within layers not drawn to scale, okay, so it's just like, um, you know, like just to kind of like uh, know the parts, right, maybe, uh, so it's not drawn to scale. So, yeah, I guess. I mean, it makes sense because, you know, this one 6 to 12 to 100 kilometers. And then this one was 800, right? It means that 8 times this, you know, rationally speaking, uh, it's not really, right? Yeah, it's only like 5 times. So, it's not to scale, I guess. Uh, the eye interface between Earth surface and outer surface. The Garmin line, altitude of 100 kilometers is shown, okay? Uh, the layers of the atmosphere are drawn to scale, whereas, oh, okay, whereas objects within them, such as the International Space Station, are not, oh, okay, so, uh, I guess this one over here is to scale, it's not like this one, right? Uh, the International Space Station may be too big, right? I'm not entirely sure, but whatever. Uh, excuse me, my nose is very itchy, probably I got another flu, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I just changed my bed sheets. Probably that's the reason. I don't know. Uh, you know, every time I change bed sheets, it always feel like a little bit dusty, right? I don't know why. I don't know how. Um, you know, it should be like clean, right? But apparently not. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but yeah, my nose feels very itchy right now. Excuse me again. Oh God. But yeah. Mm, anyway, uh, let's continue because we already spent 10 times, uh, 10 times, not 10 times, but more like 10 minutes. Um, uh, outer space does not begin at a definite altitude above Earth's surface, okay? Uh, it's about 100 kilometers, is conventionally used, okay? Um, I guess, like, uh, show me something that's a little bit scary, I guess, or not. Oh, this one, interesting. Formation and state. Uh, inflation, okay. Quantum fluctuation, I guess. Oh, this is uh, through time. To time, I mean, right? Like, um, in the beginning of time, I guess, there's only one dot, which is the Big Bang. And then as the time goes on, it gets expanded, right? That's why it becomes this, uh, like, uh, the circle becomes bigger, right? Uh, I guess. And then this one is over here, I guess. Uh, all right. Um, uh, the size of the whole universe is unknown, and it might be infinite in extent. Uh, so that's very big, right? Which is why it can become scary, right? Like, you know, most of the space is empty space, right? Like, uh, you know, you don't just randomly found like I don't know, like a, a house or something like that, right? It's not like that, you know, like, uh, even if you go from Earth to Venus or uh, Mars, the the distance is actually very far away, right? Like, uh, 
you know um it's just that far away right uh and most of them is just basically empty space right which is scary right like a uh, you know imagine yourself like one kilometers away you know from the earth uh outer space right um and then you're just floating uh there in the space right which is a little bit scary to be honest there's nothing over there there is nothing uh even there's no air right like you can't really uh breathe air right because all the air that uh, might have you might have been existing um Maybe through the gravitational, they got sucked into uh, all the planets, right? And uh, the gas that is in the planet don't just go away out in the outer space, right? Uh, because of the gravitational pull, therefore they, they stay on Earth, right? Uh, I guess in general, if we technically speak about uh, planets in general, right? Like a... They are consisted of uh, atmosphere, right? Uh, and one of them... Um, and atmosphere don't just uh, like go away right they will try to stick in close to the gravitational uh, pull of that planet right um, therefore there is the gas uh, that construct this whole atmosphere right uh, but yeah there's that I guess uh, is there anything else that interesting over here like a random fact I am not sure I guess um energy density of the present day universe at the equivalent of 5.9 protons per cubic meter including dark energy dark matter and baryonic matter okay uh, the atoms account for only 4.6 percent of the total energy density um you know we're talking about density right it, mean, it means how dense it is right and it's only 4.6 percent uh, i guess well, not really, it's just the atoms, right? But more like 5.9 protons per cube, right? So it means that um, like 99% of it is just an empty thing, right? Uh, is that right? Maybe maybe I'm not right, but, uh, you know, technically speaking, most of space is just empty space, right? Um, and, you know, like how far away it is from one planet to the other one, uh you know like uh you know thinking about space in general right like uh in solar system right what what is the nearest solar system uh from us right we i mean someone know right maybe you guys know but i don't so yeah uh, and it's probably very very far away right and then you know like another galaxy as well uh we are in galaxy milky way i guess um what about other galaxy like Andromeda galaxy, right? Which is like again very very far away, right? Even that's like our neighboring galaxy, right? And you know to go to Andromeda anyway, we will probably will meet a lot of solar system first, and maybe like hundreds of thousands of them, maybe millions of them. I'm not sure, but you know like again, uh, and we know that its planet. Uh, like you know go to mars anyway speaking it's a very long distance right and that's just planet it's not a solar system and then you know like to from one solar system to another solar system like independent solar system which you know there uh, all the planets don't um, like got distracted by other solar system right uh, it will be very far away right um, and then we will see that like a hundred thousand times or million times of that until we eventually meet uh another galaxy which is andromeda right and that in itself it means it just means that it is you know like it's scary basically how um how secluded we are right on earth you know if we look up in the sky right from other objects in the sky right uh or in the space in general uh you know we might think that yeah in on earth there's a lot of stuff going around right like uh you know you can meet other person like maybe after 10 meters of walking right maybe you can find someone else um you know 10 meters 100 meters but it's just like a short distance right uh you can meet people easily right but this one if we're talking about planets to planets it's the distance is just disgustingly very far away right um and it's kind of scary in itself because it means that 
is it true that everything is just empty? You know, there's also speculations about dark energy, right? There's also dark matter as well, you know. Uh, I don't think it's scientifically proven just yet. Uh, maybe it has. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't think it's actually, like, you know, everything that uh, talks about dark energy anyway, um, it's just... Uh, to the limit of uh, like presumption right like an assumption of research yeah like look at this right uh, this might look very uh, you know very close right but the fact that from you know like this one over here to another galaxy over there um, it's just very very far away uh, you know um, it will take uh, like light years away right uh, maybe million light years away who knows right uh, I mean, you guys probably know, right? I don't really understand much about this anyway. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, this is basically what I'm saying, I guess. Like, um, you know, about planets, right? Effect on biology and human bodies. Oh, there's an astronaut over there. Because of the hazards of vacuum, astronauts must wear a pressurized space suit. Space suit, I mean, while off Earth and outside their spacecraft. Um, I guess, yeah, like I said again, there's no air, there, therefore you cannot breathe, right? There's also no pressure, it means that, um, you know, your body will probably suffer, um, like, you will implode or feel the necessary of getting exploded, right? Uh, because, you know, you are on one, uh, one atmosphere, right? So, if you are at zero atmosphere, kind of then you will feel that uh, your body is getting pulled, right? I don't know how, like, how hard it is getting pulled, but I can only imagine, right? Because you're getting pushed, uh, like, you you usually, you know, well, not usually, you always get uh, pressed by the Earth atmosphere, which is one atmosphere, right? Um, if you don't get pressurized, it means that you will feel the reverse way, right? you will feel your stuff getting pulled, basically. So, you know, it's like a, a very scary feeling, right? If you ask me. Uh, despite the hardest environment, life forms have been found that can withstand extreme space conditions, okay? Species of Li, Li Chen, I guess? Lysen? Lysen? Li Chen? Carried on the ESA Biopan. Ex, uh, survive exposure for the 10 days in 2007. Um, honestly... Um, withstanding extreme space condition, I don't think you can conclude that as that. I mean, these guys are researchers, right? And I'm just a random dude on internet anyway. But I think, um, you know, if you say something that can withstand and survive, it means that they can survive, uh, you know, living things term of survive, right? They can actually live. Uh, there but in this case because they only like survive for 10 days that's barely nothing right that's just a little bit over of a week can you say that that they are survive well you know maybe the correct term will be they are slowly suffering to die right they don't survive though because they're dead right because after 10 days they probably um like cease to ex to exist right so i uh, did they survive you ask me then i would say no they just uh slowly suffering their inevitable doom right um that's about it i guess which is again very uh scary thing right um human can i guess human cannot live on space i mean that's a thing right like uh you know you know, you will need basic survival to survive anyway, right? To live. You will need food, water, you know, um, I don't know, and other stuff as well, right? And then oxygen as well. So, you know, maybe you can have an, a spaceship, spaceship, but then again, how would you get those resources, right? How can you recycle those, right? Uh, if not on Earth, you know, uh, with everything, every resource that we have here, right? Um, you know, if you want to survive, if you want to, if humanity want to survive on spaceship for a long time, then maybe we can build some spaceship that is on the size of Earth, right? Um, you know, uh, f 
you know, like, um, I don't know what, what, like, fictitiously speaking, um, you know, make Earth our spaceship, right? Then uh, we just need to find out how to push Earth, right, out of the uh, gravity of Sun. And then we can, I don't know, start controlling the Earth, you know, like a, a rally or a race, right? I don't know. That sounds cool, to be honest, but then again, um, you know, we will still need lots of stuff, right? Like, um, we need the sun, we need, uh, you know, sunlight for the energy, the source of energy. And then we also need the earth to stay rotating in its axis, right? Uh, because if we stop rotating, then everything will just got um, thrown away, right? Because of the inertia, I guess, you know, like, we are, you know, you guys might be um, sitting still, right? Uh, but the thing is that we actually move uh, because of the Earth rotation, right? Uh, and if Earth suddenly stop moving, then because of the inertia, then we will actually got thrown away, right? And, you know, everything uh, on Earth will be destroyed, right? And, you know, destructed. Um, so, yeah, you know, making Earth into a spaceship, that's like a fiction, um, you know, science fiction idea, right? Um, is it possible? I don't think so, you know, to be honest, that's like, the chance for that to be possible is like zero, you know, um, f fictionally speaking, yeah, I guess it's 100% because you can always imagine things, right, uh, if we talk about this, uh, in the fiction way, right, but, yeah, um, what else? You know, I'm not feeling about uh, reading all of this. I guess you can watch or read this by yourself. I guess just go to this Wikipedia source, I guess. Uh, discovery, exploration, and application. Okay, interesting. Uh, is there anything interesting over here? I don't know. Um, okay. Um, in ancient China, the second century, astronomer Zhang Heng became convinced that Space must be infinite, extending well beyond the mechanism that supported the sun and the stars. Uh, well, guess what? Uh, that person was right. Um, the space consists not only sun and planets uh, and stars. There's also other galaxies as well. So yeah, congratulations to you, sir or ma'am. You're right. Um, yeah, it's not... Also, yeah, it's actually quite funny as well. I mean, it's not really funny, but more like um, knowledge cap, right? Like uh, people in the past actually think, actually thought, I guess, that, you know, the center of universe or the center of everything is actually uh, Earth, you know, and then everything just goes around the Earth, right? Until, you know, years later, our technology came and then we we figured that we actually are not the center of things. We just rotate. The universe um, stays still. Uh, well, quote unquote, stay still, right? They're still moving, but you know the closest thing that's moving is actually us, right? The Earth is rotating to the sun. Uh, I mean, to itself, and then the uh, the Earth as well. Uh, revolving uh, or revolve around the sun, right? And then the sun itself is also moving, right? To you know, moving, uh, like in the direction of the galaxy, right? Uh, according to the black hole in the middle, right? So yeah, I guess everything is moving, and then the galaxy in itself, uh, with the black hole in it, uh, as in the center, I guess everything, um, is like you know, the whole galaxy also moves, right, because of the gravitational pull from other galaxy, you know, like maybe Andromeda, and if I read it right, I think we will actually have a collision uh, with Andromeda, so, you know, like, uh, yeah, like, we will hit each other, basically, and then uh, through the model, I think, that people create, we will actually form a singular galaxy, so, yeah, with... Uh, you know, with uh, that beautiful motion that you can always find in the internet, right? Uh, but yeah, it's still interesting, I guess, um, how far our technology become uh, throughout the time, right? Throughout the history of human. And I think like, um, like close, 
I what is it called again? Like uh, recently, I think we know that um the, I think the NASA NASA or something like that, has the image of from the what is it like a telescope, right? Which is a better version uh of the picture that they took way back in the day, right? So you know that in itself is already showed how advanced our technology is, right? And it will just keep growing. It will just keep improving. Maybe later we can actually see something more closer, right? Like, uh, I don't know, like enhance and see that, you know, there's a lot of uh, stuff. Maybe we can actually find uh, any other living form, right, in the other space. Maybe they already did. You know, this is like one of a uh, conspiracy as well that I think uh, maybe they already know that there is actually something or someone out there living in a planet but they try to uh, keep it as a secret to everyone just so that you know we don't try to um, engage to communicating with them right maybe right uh, it's just a conspiracy theory i guess um you know that there's actually alien but um you know they try to keep it secret so that we don't do anything uh stupid to them right and start a galactic uh war or something right like a interstellar a war right we don't want that and yeah uh which is an interesting conspiracy to be honest like uh maybe they actually already have a telescope that can zoom in to the planet to the surface and then they found that there's actually a population of aliens right um which probably is more advanced than us or maybe they are like still in the caveman right but then again that's just a theory i guess uh but yeah anyway i think that'll be it for today's discussion about outer space uh i know this one is not that scary because we don't really see any imagery right um but yeah i guess um, it's still a spooktober because I think that there can still be potential things that can become scary. Right? Just the fact that the space is very wide and then very, uh, you know, distant with one with another. You know, just how empty it is. The emptiness, it just feels scary in itself, right? Um, so, yeah. I think that will be it for today's discussion uh, of Spooktober Day 10. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you again tomorrow with another discussion. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you again very, very soon. And see ya.